Hello everyone, I'm Vincent from Tremere Interactive and today I'm going to show you how to set up Steam Audio for Unreal Engine. So first of all, you'll want to uh, yeah, know that there's documentation for this by Valve and you can find it online. I'll be putting a link into the description as well. So if you're having any difficulties, you can always refer to this and it should help. Um, yeah, other than that, let's head to the Epic Games Launcher and uh, Steam Audio should work perfectly fine for any versions above 4.20. Then choose your preferred version um, and then click this little drop down and create a shortcut. Okay, so here's our shortcut and we just need to rename this to UE4 Steam Audio. Um, yeah, and then you wanna right click, go to properties from its Eigenschaften here in this file path, you want to add a space, then a minus audio mixer. Then click OK and open up Unreal through this. You want to always open up Unreal through this if you're working with Steam Audio uh, because it unlocks some certain things that won't be there if you just open it up normally. But um, yeah. It's uh, just necessary so that the engine knows that you want to be working with that. Otherwise, some options will be missing and things might just go wrong. So I would always recommend to open it up through this shortcut. All right, so just open up any of your projects. Um, should definitely work in all of them. I just made a little demo scene here where yeah, we have uh, some ambient sound different places and here I try to make like a really quick crappy church yeah so now if I click play we haven't really done too much at all and you can see that it's a uniform volume uh, at least this fire sound it has the same volume wherever I go and actually the volume should be falling off the further away I go so that's where steam audio comes in as an engine um, so to get that set up, uh, first of all, we want to go to settings and plugins. And here, just search for Steam Audio, and you will find it um, here. Just enable it. Uh, it's a beta version at the moment, so yeah. And then you will have to restart the engine, which should only take a second. Okay. So now that you're back in. Um, the next thing you want to do is navigate to your project settings. And there's two things that you can do here. So uh, first of all, you can just go to plugins, go to Steam Audio. Uh, you can change a bunch of stuff here. But like, for instance, reverb, you might want that to be real time. Or the indirect spatialization method, uh, you can choose HRTF, which will give you a better quality, but uh, will be more computationally expensive. And there is a bunch of other stuff that you can change here for real-time settings and baked settings. Um, today I'll be covering real-time settings only, um, but baked settings are useful for when you want to ship your product. Um, yeah, so that's basically all we can change here. Then uh, you might want to go to your platforms, or you should go to your platforms, and uh, look at what you're developing for. So at the moment, I'm developing for Windows. Then when you scroll down, you get to the audio section. Here, you have to specify that you want to be using Steam Audio for uh, spatialization, reverb, and occlusion. Um, and here you can also change some other variables. Okay, um, awesome. So, next thing that you have to do, uh, each actor, if you scroll down, here has some attenuation settings and you have to create those. So here we can go to sound attenuation. Let's double click to open that up. And here we can change a bunch of stuff that will affect the game. Um, so here you can kind of uh, choose how you want sound to fall off. I'll just leave that linear. Um, yeah, this should all be fine. Uh, here you can change uh, how far you will hear the sound and inner radius you'll just hear the sound at max volume there 
So uh, yeah, if you have like unimportant assets or less important assets, uh, I don't know, like maybe a light that uh, has some kind of electric sound that's relatively quiet, you want a pretty small fall off distance uh, because it just is, isn't a very important sound. Um, yeah, and for more major sounds, you'll probably want a larger fall off distance. Okay, so here attenuation specialization, you definitely want that checked uh, and you want to use binaural. Uh, of course, you need headphones for this. Uh, enable air absorption, I'll just do it, it's kind of up to you. You can also mess with the values here. Um, yeah, this should all be fine. And here's an important one, attenuation occlusion. Um, so basically if you want the sound to be dampened or cut off, uh, through walls, you'll want to use this, and then uh, you can yeah, specify the trace channel. So if only visibility or only road static, etc., will affect this stuff. Uh, yeah, and then if we come to the plugin settings, this part you will not see if you just launch it from um, the Epic Games launcher. This stuff you will only see if you uh, launch Unreal through the shortcut that we just made. So if we we'll want to add an element for each one of these, and uh, we'll also create them here. You wanna go to uh, sounds and phone on, and then you can create all of them here. Okay, let's start with the phone on source spatialization settings. Um, so HRTF, what does HRTF mean? You might be, uh, be wondering. Uh, so I also had to look this up on Wikipedia, but it means head related transfer function. Um, and it's essentially how your body knows uh, where a sound is coming from. It's kind of your natural localization. Um, so is something coming from the left, is something coming from up or down? Um, all that stuff and uh, HRTF is just a way to model that and in this case your head is your camera um, yeah so here it won't be the actual head of the third person character it'll be the camera okay and here you probably want bilinear um, yeah it just gives you a smoother result but it's more computationally expensive like a lot of this stuff we'll cover so yeah, we can go ahead and close that and put this in here. All right, so the occlusion settings, um, this kind of depends on if you want ge geometry to affect your sound. And I would recommend using the direct occlusion frequency dependent transmission. If you use frequency independent, then uh, yeah, the, the, there won't be any difference between, um, I guess, high notes and low notes and I don't know what this does. <laughs> so yeah, we'll take this. And then this one's interesting, raycast or partial. So um, if you use raycast, you're assuming that the sound is coming from a point. If you use partial, you're assuming that the sound comes from a sphere. So here in raycast, you can't edit this. And partial, this is basically the radius of the sphere. And uh, this is useful for, for instance, when you're coming around a corner and there's, um, yeah, if you have uh, some sound around that corner, it'll be very, uh, yeah, I guess there, there will be a strong cutoff if you only use these ray casts. Um, but if it's partial, it's kind of a sphere shape, the cast rays from there, uh, yeah, it'll be a smoother transition around that corner. So uh, yeah, 100 is fine. Uh, 100 is one meter, well, yeah. Okay, fixed based attenuation, that's where and the air absorption, we want all of that. So yeah, let's close that and plug that in. All right, reverb settings. Uh, you don't necessarily need these, but I mean, they're nice. Um, so yeah, here, source-centric reverb contributions. Uh, I don't know if you want to hear footsteps around a corner or something like that. Uh, stronger, you might want to up this and if you want to hear them less, I guess, uh, lower it, but it doesn't really matter. 
let's keep this at one. Okay, and we'll also plug this in. All right, so now you might be thinking, wow, okay, we're done, but not yet. We need to go into here, and specify the attenuation settings for all these actors. And I can also do that in my blueprint for my grenade um, that plays a sound out location here when it explodes. Um, yeah, you just have to click this drop down here. Then you'll get to the attenuation settings and you can choose this. Also, a good idea is to make multiple attenuation settings for how important your assets are. So. Um, yeah, really important assets, ones that you want to sound like really crisp, you might uh, put in some really high quality settings and less important ones you might put in lower quality settings. And you, also you obviously want to um, adjust the the radii that you can change here and all of that uh, just to save on computational power, but I'll leave that for now. Okay, awesome. So. Um, yeah, now we can see uh, when I walk away, it gets quieter, when I get closer, it gets louder. And you can also hear left and right if you're using headphones. Um, okay, and here, you can hear this strong fire in here, but you might notice that the geometry has absolutely no effect. Um, and that's because we haven't done something yet. So um, what Steam Audio also gives you is this extra tab uh, just for Steam Audio. And for Steam Audio to recognize geometry, you need to add everything. Um, or you don't need to add anything. You can just go to one of these. Um, or you can just go to a mesh and then type in phonon you can add a phonon geometry element, then it'll recognize that. Okay, so, um, yeah, now uh, we've clicked on add all and we've added all of the mesh components, but uh, an important thing to do now is to export it. So, uh, yeah, this is your scene and then uh, the plugin knows to deal, uh, to work with that scene. If you don't export it, it just won't do anything. So now, hopefully, yeah, here, the wall definitely is doing some work. Yeah, and so I can also go into this church and I can throw some grenades around. And you also hear more of an echo in these large rooms, which is nice. So, uh, that's pretty good already. So, uh, one last thing that you can do is you can specify materials. So at the moment, everything just has a generic material. If I scroll down, uh, no, I have to add a component. And if you search for phonon, whoops, you can add a material here. Um, then you can specify this is brick, concrete, all of the, these uh, presets here, or you can create a custom one um, and just look up in the internet what those physical values are and just plug them in here. Um, so I don't know, for a church we might want, uh, yeah, something like brick. And something that's relatively easy to do, uh, I'll just do it with this because it's smaller, is to select all this stuff Um, yeah, and then parent it to this. And then here, if we add the phonon material, um, you can go in here, choose, I don't know, carpets or whatever. And then in here, you can click on export all children. So these are the children of this one wall here. And that way, you set the material for all of this uh, geometry. Yeah, and that way you can create some really 
realistic scenes. Okay, so that's how you set things up. Um, I'll leave some documentation below and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, feel free to follow our social media. I'll leave some links to that as well. And you know, like and subscribe, all that jazz. All right, peace.